Welcome to Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital's Health Talk. I'm Dr. Douglas Shashinsky of Robert Wood Johnson Physician Enterprises, Warren Internal Medicine. About one-third of the United States adults are obese, according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Obesity can cause life-threatening health issues, such as heart disease, stroke, type 2 diabetes, and certain types of cancer. Weight loss surgery can help obese individuals lose weight and keep it off, improving their health and quality of life. On today's show, we will talk about weight loss surgery options and the benefits of long-term weight loss. Joining us today are Dr. A.J. Goyal, a board-certified bariatric surgeon at Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset, and Kathy Fucarino, a bariatric surgery patient. Welcome to the show. Welcome, Thank both you. of you. First of all, Dr. Goyal, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit about your background and what got you interested in bariatric surgery and where your office is. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I started my career about over 15 years ago. I did a, a laparoscopic fellowship, which included bariatric surgery and general surgery, which is what we practice. I founded the New Jersey Bariatric Center, and it kind of fell in my lap. It was, uh, it start, we started doing bariatric surgery. It was the forefront doing laparoscopic bariatric surgery in, uh, in 2001, 2002, and we were starting to do uh, laparoscopic bariatric surgery. And since then, uh, we've done over four or 5,000 cases, and it's been a very rewarding experience uh, seeing and improving quality of life of uh, overweight patients. So let's start with the audience. Uh, they may not understand what bariatric surgery is. What is bariatric, first of all, what does bariatric surgery mean and the forms of what's available currently? Yeah, so bariatric surgery is, uh, is weight loss surgery uh, in, in layman's term. It's, uh, it's a surgery to decrease uh, weight. Uh, and what we know now is weight, especially if somebody's over 100 pounds, over the ideal body weight, it's, it's a, has a g very high genetic component. It has over 80% genetic component. And uh, that doesn't uh, stop one from uh, noticing that it's also environmental, how you eat, uh, what exercise you do, but it definitely has a big uh, genetic component. And, and so uh, what that involves is weight loss surgery and changing the dynamics of your uh, stomach. Okay, so again, we, we go back to the fact that these people, most of them have BMIs of greater than 35, sometimes greater than 40, <clears throat> and they've gone through all of the things that they could possibly do with uh, weight uh, watchers, different types of uh, uh, diet procedures. Some of them may have gone to doctors who tried to give them medications to lose weight, and they haven't been able to lose weight. That increased weight increases their risk of developing diabetes, developing high blood pressure, and with that complications such as increased risk of stroke, increased risk of heart disease, increased risk of kidney disease. So initially bariatric surgery was a pretty extensive type of surgery where we opened them up, opened and made different connections and rerouted things around the intestines and stomach. Nowadays, as you describe, it's laparoscopic meaning that you're going through the belly button, it's not nearly the procedure it used to be, and the procedure is very different now than what it used to be. So, obviously weight loss surgery has evolved over the years. You know, the first weight loss surgery has been done since 1970, which was a gastric bypass or open. Uh, and in the early 2000s and late 1990s, uh, bypass was changed over to laparoscopic surgery, which is still, uh, people say, is a gold standard. And the way that works is basically decreasing your stomach into a small uh, pouch and decreasing the amount of absorption of calories, okay? And that's gastric bypass surgery. And so it works three ways. It works by decreasing the amount of food you eat, uh, changes your hormonal balance so you're not as hungry as possible. That affects a genetic component, as we talked about. Uh, and uh, third thing is not absorbing all the calories. So that's the, uh, the gold standard that has been uh, stood the test of time. Uh, more recently now, as things have evolved over the last eight to ten years, uh, we've had uh, uh, what's called a sleeve gastrectomy. And what that is, is what we may do with the stomach is make your stomach into a uh, stomach <clears throat> uh, pouch, uh, kind of an egg, uh, it's kind of like a tube, uh, which is a banana shape as some people say it. 
And what that does is that it's two things. It decreases the amount of food you eat, but more importantly, it changes the dynamic hormonal balance, which is decreasing your hunger hormones. Which is, again, most people don't understand. Most people think it's just changing the size of the stomach. It's that hormonal balance that makes a big difference. Correct. That is the most important part, and that's what we talk about now uh, about weight and weight loss surgery is, is weight is not just eating unhealthy all the time, uh, not exercising. It's about a genetic component, what a set point somebody is born, born with. And with these surgeries, the hormonal balance changes to, uh, to decrease your weight and, and potentially keep it permanently off. Now, the other important thing is that you're part of the bariatric surgery program at Robert Johnson University Hospital, and Correct. that program itself was given the Bariatric Center of Excellence designation. What does that mean? That means that uh, we're evaluated by uh, uh, Center of Excellence uh, where uh, all the important factors are uh, at the hospital, uh, whether it's the OR team, the same OR team, uh, the post-op care, the pre-op care, uh, evaluating uh, risks of uh, issues that come up and making them as low as possible. Uh, so it's a, it's a very important designation to have. Well, it's important also because it describes the whole team approach to the surgery. It's not just the surgery itself, it's what's done before the surgery, it's what's done prior to surgery, it's what's done at surgery, and then it's what's done after surgery. That is correct. I mean, it's a big process. Uh, undertaking the surgery, um, most of our patients, one of the biggest questions I ask is, when did you start looking into thinking about the surgery? And most people, by and large, say they have thought about it for two, three, four years. It's, and, and so when they do come, uh, it takes a, it's a big process in terms of making sure that their health conditions are as stable as possible. Uh, in addition, to start gearing them up to changing the lifestyle. Uh, as we talked about, environment is still an important factor and people don't necessarily eat the right things or do the right things. So what we try to do is prepare them uh, for a few months before surgery uh, and get them through the insurance process. And also get them through the psychologic process of getting through the surgery, get them through the dietary process. You'll have them see a dietitian. If the person has any heart disease, you may have them see their cardiologist, make sure they're okay. If they have a pulmonary condition, you may do that also. The other thing is if they've got sleep apnea, you maybe need to be addressed prior to and afterwards also. Correct. And when someone comes into the program, what do you tell them when what do you tell them to expect? Well, I think the biggest thing to uh, talk to patients is it's not an easy way out. And I think they know that. Uh, I think it's, it's a lot of healthcare providers and family and friends who pro probably don't realize that, that it takes a lot of work. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, commitment to change lifestyle and continuing to eat healthy and do the right thing, exercising, and, that's, and to use it as a tool. Um, and that's very important. So someone who comes to you, say they're 300 pounds, 5 foot 6 inches, and they uh, have the surgery done, how much do you expect that person to lose, and how long a period of time would it be for them to lose that kind of weight? So by and large, uh, most patients lose about 60 to 70 percent of their excess body weight. So if somebody is 150 uh, pounds or weight, in example, um, they're going to lose about 90 to 100 pounds, and generally about a year, year and a half. And how do they feel after it? Well, I'll go through, Kathy will tell us about that afterwards. So if someone is looking for that, what steps would they do to get into this program? So I think at this point, there's a lot of social media, there's a lot of uh, things written about it. It's, it's a very safe procedure these days. So people uh, saw, uh, uh, seek us out. We actually uh, recommend them making a consult with us and we, we go over all these things. Uh, additionally, we have online seminars as well as uh, live seminars to, uh, to go over these things. In fact, Kathy's one of our uh, uh, ambassadors at these uh, seminars. To, uh, to give her, her side of the story for patients. So let's move over to Kathy. Tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved with this. Um, well, let's see, after I had my kids, I uh, tried everything to lose weight. Weight Watchers, diets, pills, the gym, starving. Um, it just didn't seem to work. Once I hit 40, um, anything I did just stopped. I'd been researching for a while, so the doctor said, a few doctors, and 
once I got to this team, I was extremely comfortable. They handled everything for me. I never had to pick up the phone to call my insurance. They handled A to Z. Um, I went through all the testing. Um, I found that the nutritionist worked with what I could live with, not with what they wanted me to have. They made it a personal, something that I could tweak and make it my own and feel comfortable changing it for the rest of my life. And um, I would say that they, they really prepared me for what was going to happen afterwards. Um, nobody can really tell you what you're going to feel or how you're going to feel afterwards, if you're going to regret it or not. And the team was just so amazing, always available, the support teams. Um, I had a great recovery. I was home the next day, walking around, um, very minimal pain. It felt like I just beasted out at the gym. That's what it felt like. Um, and I have to say, within two days of my surgery, I stopped taking all my diabetic medicine. I used to shoot myself five times a day with insulin at 20 units, each unit. And it was amazing just not to have to take insulin anymore. Uh, my vision improved, my neuropathy uh, went away, knee issues, ankle issues. Um, it was just starting to slowly all go away. And, um, so let's just let's talk about how it started. You started again multiple medical uh, conditions. Yes. You contacted the uh, bariatric center, mm -hmm. and what was the process? Uh, my first process was a consultation to see whether or not my insurance would cover me, and to meet the doctors. I happened to meet Dr. Goyal on the first visit, and I was very comfortable. And uh, from there, the uh, navigation uh, team basically handled my insurance. Like I said, I never had to call to see what was required. I had to go through uh, blood tests and EKG, chest x-ray, uh, the nutritionist also a psychiatric evaluation. And within four months, I had my surgery. Okay, and which uh, surgery did you have done? I had the gastric sleeve in August 2011. Mm -hmm. So it's been about six and a half years. And how much, I, I hate to say this because you're never supposed to ask a woman You're not, this. but um, that's what I'm here for. Um, I lost 89 pounds. I went from a size 18 down to a size 3-4, just in time for my high school graduation. Very nice. Yes. So tell us the experience. Again, the important thing that, again, this is being done at a bariatric center of excellence program. Right. Not many programs have that, which makes this program very different than many of the ones throughout the country. Absolutely. The experience that you had with them. They were amazing. Anytime I had an issue, um, even if I didn't know what it was, if it was gas or excuse, constipation, the doctors were right there. If I went to the emergency room, they were contacting them, following up, um, making sure all my levels were fine. There wasn't anything that I needed to go to my own doctor for because they handled everything for me. And are you still uh, followed by, those, by the people? I am. I am, and I go to my regular doctor, and it's great. My A1C level's great. Um, my weight is great. Um, what more could I ask for? Thanks, Doc. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so tell us more about bariatric surgery itself. So I think, uh, as I said, I think it's, it's definitely a tool uh, uh, for uh, patients, uh, and uh, it's, it's something that people should realize uh, once they've tried everything that it's not, shouldn't be think of as a last resort. Um, and, and it definitely, the biggest thing I hear from patients, I wish I had done this years ago. And that's the biggest thing I hear. And their quality of life improves. Uh, their longevity, one of the things we code is they are uh, decrease in life uh, expectancy or increase in life expectancy, I should say rather, uh, is about by 10 years. Uh, and that's a lot of long years to live. Uh, and uh, as uh, Kathy said, uh, improvement of, uh, in medical conditions is a great uh, uh, success. Uh, a lot of times now people are doing this for diabetes, cure of diabetes. Uh, well, there was a paper in New England Journal of Medicine two years ago that said people who are, in diabe who are diabetics who have uh, requiring insulin of more than 20 units a day, this should be an option that we use in order to uh, reduce their uh, need of insulin and possibly even reversing the disease process of diabetes. Correct, correct. So the, the low BMI study, uh, obviously the National Institute of Health has, uh, has 
has come up with criteria where somebody should qualify, which is about 100 pounds or over the ideal body weight. Uh, but uh, we, uh, along with other places, are doing a study to do weight loss surgery on uh, patients who have diabetes uh, at, a, at, a, at a less weight to see their improvement. Again, many of us kept this as last resort because prior to the sleeve, this really was a pretty extensive surgery. Going back to the initial bariatric surgery, doing the row and Y uh, bypass, it was pretty extensive and we were very fearful of it. It's a very different experience now that it's laparoscopic and now that you're able to do the sleeve procedure. I, I, I agree to some extent what you're saying. Uh, I've been doing this for 15 years. I think one of the things happened was that uh, there were some people who were doing it uh, that had some bad results, uh, but uh, since I've been doing it for 15 years, whether it's bypass or sleeve, uh, we've had uh, great results with them. And, and uh, sleeve certainly is a good alternative now uh, to the procedures uh, that we have to help patients. The other thing, of course, is your experience makes a big difference in the world, and that's why it's important that when someone does choose someone for a bariatric surgery, they do choose a program that has the designation that Somerset Hospital or bariatric surgery has. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's very important to go to a center uh, whether uh, to see if you, uh, your surgeon has uh, laparoscopic trained, uh, uh, has uh, the experience, uh, you know, to ask about uh, risk of surgery, ask. Uh, questions from your, your surgeons. Again, the designation showing that, again, you do follow up, that you have the low risk of complications, the low risk of infections, that the people do do well afterwards, that you have the uh, pre-operative, uh, uh, you do the consultation pre-operatively, that you do the psychologic and physiologic studies beforehand, that you have them see their specialists if necessary beforehand. You do everything comprehensive as because the, the uh, program has the designation as well as it has a team in, in it. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I'd like to add one more thing to that is that surgery uh, and the first year losing weight is really phenomenal. But long term, uh, there's a very important factor where you need the support. And a lot of studies have shown that people who, who follow with their surgeons and continue in support system have a better long term success in keeping their weight off. And so what we try to do for our patients is continually follow them for life. Uh, we offer nutritional support, support groups at uh, Somerset Hospital, uh, and there's a good following of patients who come there uh, for the support system. And that keeps in light that uh, weight loss surgery is a tool and, and you still have to do the right things. It does not uh, get away from uh, the disease, which is uh, uh, being overweight at, uh, if you're over 100 pounds or your ideal body weight. Uh, you know, uh, morbid obesity is a disease still. It doesn't go away. No, it never goes away, and we're using this tool to help control it. But unfortunately, if you don't go through the full process, you can reverse some of the good intentions of the surgery itself. Correct, correct. Uh, and that's, that's something we try to avoid and, uh, and, and also try to uh, uh, enhance prior to surgery to make sure people are aware what their uh, job is. Before and it's after a surgery. lifelong process. That's the big thing that people need to understand. It's, it's not a quick fix. Yeah, Correct. It's, not, it's very hard. And I think um, with this team, the majority of it was the support. The support beforehand, the knowledge, speaking to other people. You don't want to go into surgery feeling anxious and not sure if this is for you. You want to be 100%. And the support afterwards, um, just the phone calls, the follow up, the group visits. It was amazing just knowing that there are people out there who have been in your shoes and who were doing great, doing amazing. And, and for me to have had the surgery and have friends had the surgery after me and speaking as a, an ambassador, it, it grounds me, it reminds me why I did this. I did it for my health, for my children, my longevity, quality of life. Um, shopping is amazing. Uh, but the support really means a lot beforehand and after. Um, there, you're not just a number. You don't go home and, and deal with it for the rest of your life. You're always patient, you're always family, and if you ever have any issues, they're right there to help you. Now you said you're an ambassador, what does that mean? So I speak at the seminars um, for patients that um, want to hear more than just the doctor's point of view, because the doctor can't tell you what it's going to feel like the first two weeks, or what it feels like to be out in public, or 
how you eat or what you take home if, you're, if alcohol hits you a certain way. There are no questions that are too um, personal. And that's what I do. So since this is to a TV, regular TV audience, what would you tell the people? Definitely research. Talk to as many people as you can. Um, feel comfortable and know that it's not going to be easy before, during, or after. It was very hard. Um, you will hit a stall. You'll feel regretful. But if you follow the program and you start seeing those pounds go away and you see all the um, the pills that you don't have to take anymore and the fact that you can get up and run with your kids or do what you want now, it was totally worth it. Go for it. Don't wait. You're going to wish you had done it sooner. And uh, come see him. <laughs> Any thoughts on the future of the bariatric surgery? I think uh, one of the biggest things that uh, I've learned over the years is that weight is a spectrum from somebody who wants to lose 20 pounds to somebody who needs to lose 200 pounds. And I think you have to understand that surgery is one aspect of the whole thing. And for somebody who comes in who needs to lose 30 pounds, there's, uh, there are medications out there. There's a whole spectrum of things to do from exercise. And I don't want to shortchange the healthy eating habits, diet, exercises, all those things. Those are very important. Uh, but it's definitely a spectrum, and and to to realize that uh, we offer the whole spectrum to help uh, patients, uh, both in the short term and sometimes there is weight uh, regain. And 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 what we need to realize is uh, it's not necessarily to say, hey, you're not eating well, um, you're you're slacking off, and it's your fault. That's why you're gaining uh, weight because that's. Nine out of ten times, that's not always the case. It's it's a fact that it's a it is a genetic condition, and 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 to uh, call it anything else and saying hey just go home and eat healthy and exercise is really doing a dissatisfaction to your uh, uh, family or patients. And so, what do you tell the person? They it's six months after the bariatric surgery and they do gain the weight. What do you tell them? Um, so. Generally speaking, people start gaining weight after a year, year and a half, two years. Uh, the first year is very rarely somebody uh, gains weight. It's usually a good uh, weight loss. Uh, when they start losing weight, I think we have to evaluate them uh, uh, when they start gaining weight. We have to evaluate what they're eating, uh, see if they, uh, they may add one extra, they've been adding one extra snack or so. So we have to do, do a, a diet diary as we talk about. Um, we have to evaluate uh, what to exercise, uh, w where they are with that. And, and generally when we start uh, going over that and, and helping them coach, uh, we find a few issues that we can solve. Um, so that's the first steps. Okay, and from your perspective, after you had the surgery, what, <clears throat> you're no longer eating the three big meals a day. What were you eating? Wow, well the first two weeks I was strictly on liquids, which was insane, that was crazy. Those first two weeks you had a head hunger and you wanted to eat everything and everything, just out of habit. It wasn't that I had hunger pains, it was just more of a habit forming thing that's a very hard thing to break. Um, once you start getting into mushy foods and then following the hard foods, it was just two bites in, you're full, and you wait for a little while, and you take another two bites, and, and you're good. You've got your protein in, you make sure you get your water in. It was challenging at first, but um, as you go along, you have no, you, you know nothing else. That's all you can do. So you follow it as best as you can. And now when you go out with your husband, with friends to a restaurant, what do you do? Oh, my husband says I'm a cheap date. He could get me a happy meal and I'm great. But uh, normally he finishes what I don't. But uh, there's nothing that uh, I used to eat that I can't eat now. So it's just portion control and knowing when to stop before you get that I'm um, so full, disgusting feeling. Now I know. So how many meals a day do you eat? I still eat my three meals a day. I have my protein, my protein shakes, um, depending if I go to the gym, what I drink there. But I still eat the same way I did before. I eat dinner with my family on a, on a child's plate. I make it visually pretty for me. So I don't feel like I'm missing out on something, and I don't. I take my time, and I enjoy my family. And I never used to do that. I would eat the leftovers or you know, whatever was quick. And, and this really taught me um, not just about health, but to take time for myself and for my family and, and enjoy it, and I do. So the nice thing is you're still able to enjoy eating. Absolutely, absolutely. Because a fear of lots of people is that they will, you know, people who have enjoyed eating 
are no longer going to be able to enjoy it. Yes, yeah. So I remember at one seminar, one woman asked me, can I still have a big bowl of Frosted Flakes after before bed? And I said, honey, once you have the surgery and you start wanting, losing all that weight, you're not going to want that anymore. You can still have it, but it's going to slow down what you want, what you had the surgery to do. And when you think about it, she was like, you know what? You're right. I don't need it. That's what got me here in the first place. So last thoughts. How do you feel about your life now after having had the bariatric surgery? It definitely changed my life, not just my size and my health. Um, prior to the surgery, I stood home. I was a stay-at-home mom. Um, I was embarrassed of my weight. And after losing all my weight, I went back to work. I work with special needs kids now. I'm going back to school uh, to get a degree to work with special needs children. and. Uh, these are things that I never would have done. A PTO president, PTA president for two different schools at one time. I never would have had the energy to do that. And now, having had the surgery and, and really um, struggling through it and, and prospering, um, I feel like I can do anything. So what he's done is he's given you your life back. He has. He has. My doctor actually shook his hand on the first Christmas party and said, thanks for the new wife. <laughs> Thank you both for being here. Thank you. This concludes today's episode of Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital's Health Talk. Please remember that the opinions expressed here by our medical experts are not a substitute for medical advice from your own physician. If you need a physician, please call our physician referral number at 1-888-MDRWJUH. For more information about Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital Somerset, please visit our website at www.rwjbh.org forward slash Somerset. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for giving her back her life. Thank you for inviting us. It's a pleasure.